Hey, Stephen Yanni here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts with another High Octane walk around, this time of a 1965 Oldsmobile 442. Now, we all know that 1964 was the big year that the Pontiac GTO launched the American muscle car movement. Frankly, it was a mid-sized car with a full-sized engine in it. We can't forget that 1964 also saw the Olds 442, the same model year. The difference between the GTO and the 442 was the engine. While the GTO had a 389, the 442 had a 330 cubic inch V8 under the hood and 64 only. And 442 meant four barrel, four speed, dual exhaust. But for 1964, the 442 grew up and got a 400 under the hood. So 442 kind of changed. You could get an automatic in a 65 442 as well. So 442 more or less became a model designation. There's nothing wrong with that. When you see 442, you're talking about Olds' muscle intermediate. Second year. Now this one's kind of an unusual car. It's a California car. Uh, largely original sheet metal, never had rust. It's a clean example. And the missing wheel covers, that's kind of by design. Uh, if if you ask me, steel wheels presented properly with the original black paint and a red line tire looks mean, almost like Friday night street racing. And beyond that, if you ever took your 442 or any muscle car to the drag strip back in the day, they made you take the hubcaps off because on a second gear power shift, sometimes the cap would go off and get lost into the stands or wherever. So usually this meant you were ready for some battle right here, cruising or at the drag strip, hubcaps off, getting ready to fight. But beyond that, this is also an unusual body style. Now the 442 in 64 could be had as a four door, a handful of built, but the vast majority were clearly two doors. They were either sedans, hard tops, or convertibles. This one is a 65 sedan with the fixed B pillar, whereas the hard top would have no pillar here, and when the windows went down, open air motoring. So kind of unusual, the minority of 442s were this body style here. So whoever bought this car wanted the cheapest, most potent 442 possible. Less can be more. And here again, we have 1965 first year for the 442 motif, and this little die cast uh, vent right here, identified 442 muscle and chrome trim on this, and just a beautiful car. And again, the original quarter panels down here, no Bondo, no repairs, it's a sweetheart. Um, spent most of his life in Los Angeles. Make a way around to the back here, and once again, 442. And this is when Detroit realized that identification of muscle and selling the sizzle was as important as the muscle itself, 442. In this case, 400 cubic inches, four barrel carburetor, two exhaust pipes. But this one has the optional four-speed transmission. Let's look under the hood. Now, speaking of under the hood, being that this is a 1965 442, there's not going to be a 330 in this one, but rather the mighty 400. And here it is right here, ultra high compression Oldsmobile 442, use premium fuel. That's because this engine had about 10 and a quarter one compression and 345 horsepower. <clears throat> and you got to remember that GM Theoretically, in 64, when the mid-sized A-bodies came out, had a 330 cubic inch maximum ceiling on engines. GM didn't want any of their divisions putting big engines in the small car. Well, the 64 GTO broke that rule with the 389 Catalina motor in the mid-sized Tempest, Le Mans, and sold 50,000 pieces. So the other division said, hey, uh, can we break that rule? Yeah. So GM said, no problem, 400 cubes. So here it is, first year for the 400 in the 442. Beautifully restored under the hood, right down to the original single pot master cylinder. Now, some people say, oh, isn't that dangerous? No, millions of cars covered millions of miles with single circuit brakes. And as long as the steel and rubber components are in good condition, which they are here, there's nothing to be concerned with with a single pot master cylinder like we see here. And again, manual steering, manual brakes. So this is basically a weekend warrior, no air conditioning. And the beauty here is that less can be more, especially with muscle cars. Uh, and about uh, this one here, there's no automatic. Which transmission does it have? Let's go inside and look. All right, there it is, a floor-shifted manual transmission. Now, here's the thing. We've said before that in 1964, 442 meant four-speed, 
four barrel dual exhaust. Well, in 65, you get a three speed manual. That was the base transmission in your 442. There was a two speed super turbine jet away automatic or the optional four speed. This one is the four speed. So this car once again was built to haul some butt. But something cool about this one, it is a sedan and it doesn't have the optional center console. Just that mean four speed hearse poking through the floor and coolest of all, 442 is actually stamped into the shift lever right there. That's factory stuff. And what a cool piece of merchandising slash branding that is. The base steering wheel in this very basic sedan. Everything's here. It does have the Oldsmobile AM radio, bucket seats, but again, less can be more. And most of this car is absolutely original. Uh, some details have been spiffed up a little bit largely. This is an unrestored car. And again, it's from California. And here's the original California black plate right here. Uh, let's look in the trunk. I'm told there's some really cool stuff back there vouching for this car's originality. Before I open the trunk, we have to look underneath. And yeah, there it is, man. The rear sway bar, which was a 442 specific detail. It was the, uh, an anti-roll bar that helped connect the lower control arms to help prevent body roll. Unique and specific to the 442. Available on other GM muscle cars, but standard on 442. 442 was also marketed as a GM's handling muscle car, the one with corner just as well as accelerated. And again, that sway bar was factory stuff. It was standard on all 442s in 65. Okay, inside this massive trunk, yeah, this is, this is pure. Uh, what looks like here to be not surface rust, this is the orange oxide right here. Factory applied orange oxide right there. Beautiful stuff. And again, I wouldn't touch this. I wouldn't do anything with this. The trunk mat's been removed, but this is the solid floor in this thing and the orange oxide right there, which was applied before the green paint way back when. So this thing is very pure. Here's one of the four optional wire spinner wheel covers right here, which were extra cost. The uh, baby moon or the uh, bottle cap wheel covers were standard, but this one has the optional wire wheels. And you gotta love this right here, the original spare tire, which does have some use on it, but check this out. Standard equipment was red lines, Firestone red lines with the steel wheel. That is one of the original spare tires, 775.14, specific to the 442, the red line stuff. And red line tires were a big deal, new in 64, and kind of the brainchild of the Pontiac GTO marketing team, but found their way into everything from Plymouth Roadrunners to Chevy Chevelles. And the red line tire, that's one of the originals right there from 1965. Speaking of original, all this paperwork here, here's the, uh, the protection plan right here, Oldsmobile, and this is basically what would have come and all the service has been done properly right here. We even have the original uh, warranty card right here, this thing here, which would go into a sort of a credit card machine when he went to the dealer to give, have work done here right here. Delivery date, June 12th, 1965, and here is the imprint right here from this metal card. All original, all to this car. And look at this. This little notebook right here contains oil change and oil filter data from the very beginning back in January of 1966. It spent $4.07. And this goes all the way up to like 19, or 2020 or thereabouts or 2003. Look at that. The owner of this car was so diligent, he made notes when, what, where, and even more. Here's some original paperwork from when new Firestone tires were installed in the car. And uh, in Downey, California, Frank Hemming and uh, JC Penney battery, et cetera, was done. And look at this, they called the car a 66. It's a 65, guys, <laughs> look at that. But anyway, just such an original car, the original 442 in its second year right here. Now it never, equaled the sales numbers of the Pontiac GTO or even the Chevelle SS396. Buick GS400 and the Olds 442 were sort of like, not the orphans, won't say that at all, but the Olds 442 has a following and these are heavy duty collector cars, especially unrestored examples like this four speed two door sedan, built for go. It's a cool car. To learn more about it, check it out on the High Octane Classics website.